Welcome, welcome to episode 72. Do you believe it? Monaco, a part of the A Canada Travel website and a travel marketing group. 72 call. That's crazy, to be, man. That's really crazy. 72. Yeah. Never thought. And nope. many more to come. Yes, yes. So today we talked with Patricia Barnes. AKA Redheaded Patty. I love that name. Redheaded Patty. Isn't that Patty. cool? Yeah. Patricia is an award winning Canadian blogger, freelance writer, and digital journalist. So, what we're going to talk about tonight, something that's a little bit in our wheelhouse, or we like to think so, anyways, hmm. is we're going to talk about some content marketing, the importance of it, all the benefits of it, all the good stuff, including the cherry on the Sunday of all that <laughs> content marketing. Some of the biggest misconceptions, Junior, when they talk about content marketing, and we hear this all the time, um, we've always said that we think the tourism industry is about 10 years behind of where it should be, and we are hearing this all the time. But here are some of the misconceptions. One is content is content marketing. So slap content up and you're doing content marketing. OK, or that content marketing is a waste of time or all content is good content. None of that is true. None of those are true. Here's what it basically boils down to when it comes to the tourism industry. And if you want to know some stats on uh, what's been putting out there, 74 percent of Traverse State, they use social media when traveling. OK, the end product, the end user, 74 percent use it while they're traveling. Sixty percent of consumers were influenced. By authentic content. So when you're looking up on travel and they're doing their three month prior travel call and what they're doing is they're finding stuff that is changing the game plan, changing their travel itinerary. 49% of people look at travel content sites. Woo, woo, that's us. <laughs> we get some of that. So one in two people who are planning travel do that. And here's one I found. I thought this is a new one that I came across the other day. They're called 1 million travel related hashtags are searched weekly. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And you know what the sad part is? Is uh, I would say from our experience of dealing with thousands and thousands of tourism businesses, stakeholders, and communities, mm -hmm. um, people don't know how to use hashtags. No. Right? No. Over 80% of CMOs, which a CMO is a corporate marketing officer, 80% are focusing on content marketing. So if the big boys are putting all their billions into it, um, here's a form of, uh, marketing and branding and messaging that's available to the small business. Yeah. You can't go maybe on the same format as the big boys, but guess what? Uh, we have proven, and we've got many examples. You don't need the big boy to do it very well. So these are some of the things about content marketing and it's here to stay call. It's the most effective online marketing, uh, technique I would say for small business and the tourism groups, right? I'd agree with you totally. And it, it is one of the industries that the little guy can compete with the big guy by finding his niche. And uh, you don't have to put all the big dollars, which the little guy can't do. Yep. Yep. I mean, we have tons of requests all the time, as you know, for people wanting to know more about social content marketing. And you know what? And this is not something that we're uh, we talk lightly about because this is a, in our wheelhouse. So we know yeah. this, and not only do we know this, uh, our counterparts, stakeholders in the industry, are recognizing us for this because we just mm -hmm. won a national and provincial uh, community marketing award for content marketing, and that's basically a pat on the back that you know uh, people at the front lines of tourism, the front line businesses, the volunteers, the nonprofits, the everyday Joe and Janes of the street, the stay at home mom, stay at home dads, all of them can participate in content marketing when given the tools and the skills, Colin. Yeah, exactly. It's more of it's, it's, it's an education process. Like it's not tough. It just takes some time and some uh, knowledge on how to do it. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, I'm going to let you tell a little bit about who I am. My name is Greg Gerard. I like to consider myself. I work with a lot of communities. I work with a lot of businesses. I do a lot of training. Uh, I'm sort of like a tourism whisperer and your co-bro founder of acantravel.com. And a gentleman beside me, the most beautiful Colin Gerard is. Yeah. yeah. I am the, uh, the tech department uh, and the uh, computer department of the Acanta Travel talk show website. Uh, build all the stuff in the back end. And uh, so I'm here to support uh, all our clients whenever they need me. You support the clients really well. I'm, what about this supporting the brothers when they need you? 
<laughs> well, brothers could be a little needy at times. I find yeah, we're very high maintenance, right? Yeah, high maintenance for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we are the brothers of tourism. Where you're too query, maple leaf syrup guzzling, panic eating Canada tourism hosts of the A Travel talk show we bleed maple leaf red we love this country we love tourism and we sure like working with our friends uh in the tourism industry hey claw i think we should give a shout out to a friend of ours uh who passed away this week Longtime friend 10 years plus years they were there when we were starting our business in tents they were there supporting <laughs> us when, when we were just trying to break the mold and figure everything out and unfortunately our friend uh, Merv Harvey of Canyon Creek Campground passed away this week. It's very tough on us. Very good friend. We wish his beautiful, loving, and caring wife, Kim, all the success moving forward. And uh, we hope Merv is enjoying the campfire and the coffee uh, up in the big boy sky. Exactly. Yes, we're sad to, to hear him pass. And um, our thoughts are with, uh, with Kim. Yes, exactly. Today, our guests... We hope to be Canadian Patricia Barnes. We're having some technical issues uh, <laughs> over seeing how that's going to go. If we're unfortunate able to hook up with uh, Patricia, then we're going to continue talking about content marketing and we'll just talk to each other about the questions we had for Patricia and we'll fill in our little skills because we are considered a top content market in Canada where we were just awarded top 100 power influencers by Global Cloud and we're also ranked uh, number 23 of the top 1,000 travel bloggers by Global Rise. So we are a little bit in the know on how we can help you. Uh, and, and educate and share with you some of this technique. But let's just assume that Patty can. will figure this out and Patty will be joining us. Patty is a, is a content marketing specialist. Uh, you can connect with Patty. She has a, a website. You can also see her on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube. Uh, we will be posting um, when the connection, if the connection comes on, we will, <laughs> we will, we will be posting uh, her feeds on the show as we talk. And we'll probably even do it if it's uh, Junior and I carrying on for the rest of the day. We'll be sharing all of Patty's information, and hopefully we can get. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's it's not not the camera. Maybe it's the Cobro satellite. It might be. I mean, episode uh, 73 before we had uh, a video issue like this. So yeah. um, that's pretty good. Pretty good at uh, average. Pretty good yeah. odds. Yeah. And but you it know, could be. Our Cobra satellite, heavy budget, duct tape and gorilla glue together so yeah. we can broadcast live across the world. You never know. I mean, it's got 72 shows on it, so it's got some wear and tear <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens. But you can connect with Patty. Um, through her social media and her websites. Very interesting lady. She's got a great story to tell. If you have a question for Patty, uh, please post them in the comment. And if uh, unfortunately we're unable to connect, then you can always ask us questions. And we love it when you ask questions. So fire them away uh, during the live version. If you are seeing this the next day on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and uh, Instagram, if you're seeing this the next day, well, then you can't ask us questions live. That's the benefit. Yeah. <laughs> tuning in live is you get to be part of the show so but, by all yeah. means uh we know from our viewership that there's a lot out there that just uh like to lay back relax and enjoy the sounds of calling and our voices um mm. but <laughs> and then there's some that like to interact so we love you all and, and there's uh, some that hit the mute oh i'm sure there is a, mm. they hit the mute on us mm quite a bit probably when we ramble that, <laughs> that's the beauty about our show and why we're able to do 72 shows is because we have a great audience and we do put out a little bit of a different of a story so yeah unfortunately we have no patty right now um i'm not sure if she does come we're going to bring her on the show uh but in the meantime i think what we'll do is call him why don't you give us a little bit of a, a chit chat uh, what is content marketing what is content marketing? Well, that's a pretty uh, big topic to, yep. to chit chat about. Um, basically, it's 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 getting um, it's like it says, getting your content out on the internet in the in the areas where people are going to find you when they're searching for that content. So, and they want people are tired, as we've discussed before, about commercials and things being too. Um, scripted yeah 
So, I mean, people want to see the real life, what's happening at your place, at your business, interactions with customers, you know, the areas, depends what type of business you are, of course, but mm -hmm. for outdoor and tourism, they want to see people. They want to see what you do. They want to see who you are. They want to, uh, people, if people can connect with you, they will most likely come back and stay with you because they feel that connection that they've seen through your content marketing. Yeah. The thing is, is one of the big misconceptions out there is there's no ROI, which is return on investment for content marketing. Mm -hmm. Not to me, that's BS. Mm -hmm. And then the other lot, the other bad information out there is just slapping things up for content in the sake of content is doing you uh, a service. It isn't. Um, here's the thing. There's a skill to it, a big skill to it. That's why 80% mm -hmm. of CMOs are after it. And the big skill to it is this, when you put up content, you want it to show up on the first page of search engines. So you got a three year shelf life. Okay. If your content is up and you get your little five minute blast and that's all you want, that sure is a lot of effort for very, very little production. Um, yeah. one of the things when you are, there's skills to content marketing. There's over, you always tell me this call and correct me or there's over 200 different little things basically that, that portray to how you position on search engines, right? Front end and back end. Oh yeah, for sure. And they have it. Um, there's actually like six Google updates a day now. I mean, minor ones, Yeah. but, um, it's constantly changing and evolving. Yeah. See, in travel, 58% of decisions are influenced by social media. That's from Search Engine Journal in 2019. 58% of social browsers use social media to research products. That's Web Index. So the, the stats don't lie. The, the traveler, the end user is looking at your social content, is looking at your search engine content. I have never met a traveler who has not spent a lot of time on search engines looking at where they're going to go, why they're going to go, how they're going to go and plan their and book their trips. So if that's the case, then if you're a business in tourism like us, and we have been working with a whole bunch of people on their content marketing with our adventure seeker program, our experience community pro we're teaching the front lines and we're teaching avid, beautiful Canadian lovers of the land <laughs> and the adventures. We're, we're sort of sharing them what we've learned uh, over 15, 20 years of, of content marketing and blogging, because a lot of this stuff that we share isn't online. A lot mm -hmm. of, and it's always changing and it's never, never the same. So what we share now in six months is probably going to be tweaked a bit because it's always having, like you say, Colin, there's updates all the time, right? Yeah. It's constantly evolving for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So if That's... I was, so what are, um, we sort of we've sort of discussed the concept of content marketing, Colin. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the challenges uh, you see from a technical side to content marketing? And people, please, our viewers out there, all the billions of you out there, this is off the cuff because unfortunately we haven't been able to <laughs> Trisha. So we're going with it. We're playing ad lib and we're yeah. talking content marketing. So, Colin, mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges you see from a technical side? Well, again, it's mostly education, having the right tools. If you have the right tools to do it and you learn how to use the tools, then it's not much of a challenge at all. It's just a matter of dedicating regular time and effort to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's an education process. That's the main challenge is learning how to do it. Yeah. So content I was going to, I was, yeah. was going to mention as a side note, I heard, I was listening today. I heard that um, actual, like as far as, you know where we are all with COVID and people having a hard time, etc. Um, actually, that the it's been proven now that the amount of um, actual going when you travel it increases uh, your well-being and your healthiness. And not only that, but planning travel before and after when you're thinking about travel, it also increases your mental well-being. So uh, get on there and plan the trips that you plan to take and and get there. And start thinking about it now. Exactly. Exactly. And because we love it so much, I guess our mental well-being is pretty, pretty good then, eh, Junior? Well, we, every time we go on the road, we're pretty happy. Happy yeah. campers, so they say. So here's something that's interesting. Content marketing is more important now than it ever has been. And, and again, it's touching sort of, Colin, on, on your point of COVID. Okay. 
here's the thing I think the tourism industry doesn't want. One, the associations went ghost. I don't care if we get backlash for that. They have. They've left the frontline tourism in the hoop. All they did is waited for money, and they didn't do anything in the meantime to try and help the frontline tourism. It doesn't have to be money-oriented. It could be skills training. It could be a whole bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. um, that's one. Second thing is traveler trends and traveler searching habits have changed off the chart. Okay. How yes. travelers searched two years ago. And how travelers are searching now is night and day. It's not even yes. comparable. And here my fear is, is that the powers that be don't have not even adjusted to that. It looks like we're mm -hmm. going to go back to the old way of doing tourism where certain people, certain communities get all the benefits and 98% of us other smaller communities get Zippo. So here is something that I'd like to make sure is how the brands who succeed to engage with consumers right now okay mm -hmm. are the ones prioritizing search engines this is mm -hmm. this is it this is where it's going tourism especially everyone searches so mm -hmm. the ones that know how to put their content <coughs> on the first page of google and mm -hmm. target the audience that's the thing people have no idea you can actually target your audience on mm -hmm. that and it's becoming a very primary um i like to call it an awareness tool mm -hmm. um, so according to a recent uh prosper insights research analytics survey sorry 44 percent of consumers have adapted their behaviors to shop online more as a result of covid one in two people have changed the way they work search engines because of covid so what mm -hmm. do you think of that call i agree with that absolutely and more people have also learned how to do proper searches etc because they're they're getting more involved yeah but whether or not that stays or that goes back to, you know, back to normal once COVID is uh, not as prominent, I'm uh, not sure. Yeah. Like it's permanent or temporary changes? I, I think it's going to, even if it does go back, I think people's uh, travel destination uh, preferences has changed. Yes. I do mm -hmm. think that. I think the destination, I think people are actually becoming more aware of the journey as part of the destination because mm -hmm. that was the big problem uh, in previous conversations is that during COVID, it was actually getting on the plane to get there was the scariest part. So I think now what they're doing is they're actually putting more value on that journey and mm -hmm. they're putting more thought into the journey mm -hmm. and to get to that destination. But the, here's the thing. Here's a scary, I, I don't know if it's scary, but here's something to think about, Call and our viewers. If uh, there's a gap between technology and small business, I mean, anyone who you talk to knows that. Small business, yeah. tourism, there's a big gap. That's mm -hmm. partly because of the associations not pushing educational on teaching mm -hmm. them to stay up to it because the associations themselves don't have, they're not even up to it. So how are they going to teach anyone up to it? Mm -hmm. Not many businesses know where to start. Okay, mm -hmm. or have a clue about search engine exactly how they, how they work, right? So some mm -hmm. believe it's too expensive, some believe not measurable, a waste of time. What would you tell these people, Colin, about content? The naysay say the anti the anti content marketers. What would you say to them? Well, I just say they're wrong, and uh, I mean you start step by step. It's uh, if anything, you look at anything and as one big uh ball of wax uh yeah it's overwhelming but if you look at start step by step and uh, every little bit helps yeah you know yeah. learn how to do it and it'll it'll be it won't even be an effort because it'll already be included in your um in your uh, daily life yeah one of our uh one of our uh favorites to work with uh in the community that we are currently working with uh <clears throat> miss melvina white uh, oh, ooh, no, regular, regular viewer of the show uh, says content marketing uh, is today and easy marketing once it's understood. She had to put mm -hmm. that understood part because yeah. the one thing uh, with Melvina, uh, longtime viewer of the show, is when we first met, there was a learning curve. And now she's become one of the most knowledgeable people in the community um, besides you and I, of course. Oh, um, yes. But uh, she's she's really upped her game and thank you for uh tuning in there uh melvina white and anybody else have a comment about content marketing we're sort of playing it on the cuff it's the greg and colin show and <laughs> uh we're sort of having fun with it so here's another one for you call yeah um there's there's various there's various again i gotta try and word this without totally trashing who you know who 
Um, mm, yeah. Various various uh, experts work with um, with some of these associations, right? And what they they go in and they and they try to do their best to educate and to talk and to share what it is. But based yep. on <clears throat> our experiences, mm -hmm. um, what do you think? The, if if you were running the Tourism Association Junior, what concerning issues? do you feel tourism needs to address besides funding? Because that's always the go-to answer to these guys. Give me more money opposed to thinking things out. Mm -hmm. what, what, what would you say is the concerning issues facing tourism today besides the funding? Um, I, 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 again, heavily on education. I'd also say communication is huge. For yeah. people to get on to 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 discuss it, to to get on the same track, the same path, so we can support each other in in what the tourism goal is. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of places, every you got a a whole lot of tourism individuals with their own plan, which um, you know it, it doesn't go anywhere because it's just one person and a bunch of different messages. Yeah, yeah. And, so uh, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. And people just getting together and working together, having the, the the you know just so many different aspects that if people if they got together and discussed and and came up with a plan and uh, some great ideas because I mean brainstorming brings up great ideas and uh, mm -hmm. I think that would be uh, my main my main uh, thing. Yeah. Education is number one for sure. Yeah. Here's the thing: what if you want? We both believe that educating the front line, educating influencers and educating adventure seekers and educating mm -hmm. communities is huge, right? But what if you don't have the skill set to even educate? What if you don't even think that's part of the problem? Then you're in trouble. If you don't think that's part of the problem? Yeah, I'm an association. Well, I'm going to buy my way out of this. I don't think it's a problem. I don't need well, to trade my front line. I, got I don't my think you're going to fix the problem then. Exactly. Here's, <laughs> and that's why that's why it's important that you need to go beyond the, the regular channels and you need to do your research. Find out what's real out there. Don't take what they say for for gold and for granted. I mean, mm -hmm. it's self-interest. Come on, people. It's your business. Take responsibility. Do your research. Find out where the information is and who the information is. And, you know, these guys aren't everything they say isn't law and isn't right. So basically, do your own research. It's your business. It's your responsibility. And you deserve yourself to do it. And a good place to do it is contact some of our clients. Contact yes. an adventure seeker. Contact Experience Nickel Valley. Contact some of these people um, that have looked at other alternatives and have taken their own future into their own hands. I highly what? recommend it because you know what? We're not telling them what to tell you when you do con them. So what they're mm -hmm. saying is what's happening. And um, if you don't want to take our word for it, get on the horn, get on the email. They're easy to find. Experience Nickel Valley, Adventure Seekers, A Canada Travel. Just go online and talk to them and see what they have to say. I think it's pretty pretty easy. Yeah. If anything, um, what they have learned the last few years is, is that you have to be different as well. Yeah. And um, all these uh, associations are basically going from the play same playbook provided by the government. Yep. And um, you got to be recognized. You got to be seen. You got to be different. You got to be unique. You got to have your own community personality yep. to really make you stand out. Yeah, and that's funny. Let's do an analogy here. Let's say, for instance, every hotel is exactly the same. Every horseback riding is exactly <laughs> the same. Every ATV, exactly the same. Every mm -hmm. blogger, exactly the same. So why, in our right mind, without taking our bonker pill, is like, why are we accepting that associations could be all the same? Play yeah. the same, put out their magazine, yeah. everything. And, and we just said this the other day, we were watching TV. Guess which community was being marketed in BC? Just guess. There's three. Every <laughs> year. Supposedly, we BC said but supposedly BC has three communities. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's all we got. Yeah. Don't go anywhere else. So yeah. we're watching TV and guess what came on? Of course, not anything different. No, no. That was funny. Tofino. Again, yeah. Yeah. again, again. Like, come on. It's, it's the capital of BC, I think. I don't know, but I, I thought we had a whole bunch of beautiful parks in the north and hiking trails and wilderness yeah. adventures and beautiful small towns yeah. with full of art and culture. But no, no, yeah. it's either the big three. That's all you're going to hear. Yeah. Okanagan, Victoria, maybe Vancouver, and then Topino. Like, holy crow. Yeah. Like, and we're, not, 
We're not just saying don't visit. They're beautiful places for yes. sure. But we're not saying um, don't visit Tofino. It's gorgeous. Yeah. We're saying, geez, you know, we got a lot more to offer than three communities. Yeah. And look how much has changed when sometimes you, you, you see a highlight of a small community or a community that's doing something different, whether yeah. it's on Vancouver Island or even the other side of the world. We hear about it. Yeah. You know, and the and it's like little communities up on Vancouver Island, once they get noticed and once they get something, some exposure, people go there and they love it. Yep. So you know what, Call We're an award-winning uh, blogging system. We've won uh, national award, provincial awards. We've won individual blogger awards, influencer awards. We've really been on a tear the last two years because we've really kicked up the, the game and we've really thought outside the box. And we brought in ideas and programs that no one else is doing. Yeah. Um, so we've we've really come a long way. We're really happy with the direction we're going, and and we have a very positive, very good group that we're working with, mm -hmm. and and all of this seems to be coming. But when it comes down to the bottom line, the benefits of telling your story is going to go really far if you put in who you are, your personality, your characteristics. You you make it personal. You make it personal so you yes. can connect. Like Colin said, if you make it a commercial, see ya. Bye-bye. See ya. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you can connect with people, it's, I mean, that's everything. If you feel connection with somebody, you'll more rather do business with them. You'll most rather stay there. If you watch a, watch their content marketing and see how other people are comfortable and happy. And yep. It's just, I mean, people, Yeah. And the thing too is uh, one of the, the the really big things too is if you look at all the places we've stayed in thousands of places across this country, and I'll tell you, there's one thing that I've really noticed, and this is a good example of how personality characteristics and being personal works. Yeah. Every single uh, campground, accommodation, vacation home, hotel we've stayed in, the good ones was because of the host. Yes. Well, just look at uh, Merv and Kim, for example. I mean, they are everyone you talk to. They just love them and are back every year. And just, I mean, they didn't have to worry about being full. Nope. Because nope. People because love the experience. Yep. It wasn't, it, the campground played a part of it, but people love mm. coming to see Mervyn Kim. Uh, yep. There's a whole bunch of those examples across the country where they think, okay, I'm going to put up a really nice hotel and people are going to come. Yeah, they'll come. Yeah. But wouldn't it be nice if you had more returning people or if you had, because you were such a, involved in the community that you actually had the locals promoting your hotel? Where should I stay? Every local is staying your hotel because you're a good host. You're a good person. I mean, there's so many different aspects. The problem with chain hotels is they rely on the chain to do all the work. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I mean. Oh. What? Oh, just computer. Computer glitch. No. Yeah. And uh what were we saying? Uh, hotels uh, doing all the work? Yes, hotel chains. So there's a whole bunch of different opportunities for this. But bottom line, uh, what we're saying today is we'll try to get Patty back on <clears throat> again uh, later down the road so she can give her input. But what we're saying is this. Your future as a tourism business is in your hands. Mm -hmm. We've seen it over and over and over and over and over and over. The ones that take it in their own hands decide, I'm going to learn social media skills. I'm going to learn content marketing skills. Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn everything that's involved to make my business click. It's not the tourism of 40 years ago where we relied on the associations to do all the work. We sat back and took it all. Today, because of the way technology is going, you have to take responsibility. You have to learn skills. You have to develop your brand. You've got to be able to get your message straight and you've got to get on search engines on that first page. So when they search, yeah. whatever your, whatever your key, whatever your target market is, you need to be there. And anyone who says you can't beat TripAdvisor booking or Expedia on search engines, I'm going to tell you what you can. We did mm -hmm. it. We've shown people how to do it. You don't have to. They, you, you can beat the corporates at their own game, but you got to have the skills. You got to have the help. And you got to have the programs. So, especially if you're a community going after it. Yeah, <clears throat> communities can have total control, yeah. and two, two communities can build their tourism. They don't have to wait on anything else. Mm -hmm. The big thing that we're finding that's stopping everyone from being successful is one attitude. Uh, two, hard work, and three, belief. They still mm -hmm. think the tourism associations are the best thing since sliced bread. And those mm -hmm. people, we can't help. We can't help yeah. you. Um, on, the, 
Yep. I was going to say on that bit on attitude, it's important to say that um, I mean, we're talking social content marketing, which is, uh, you know, first impression of the business. It's, um, you know, basically the first impression. But, uh, you know, you got to back that up with uh, really good hosting skills. Yeah. You said before, I mean, we've had many experiences across the country where, again, a place like Canyon Creek, keep Cap, Canyon Creek Campground, anytime we're in the area, we'll stay there. We still love them. But there's other places we go and say, you know, we stayed there last time and maybe it wasn't uh, the best oh, we experience. Were, or there, there are some that we didn't, we just left some of them because, uh, you some know, some, we didn't even stay the night. We yeah. packed up and we left. Yeah. It was so I mean, bad. People that are having a bad day and they, they start yelling at us because we ask questions and stuff. I mean, that's not hosting. If you're, if you're of that kind of attitude when you're in the industry, you should probably consider a different industry. Because the hosting reception is everything. And that'll reflect in your content marketing. That'll reflect in everything. And, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd uh, to That's put that in. That's a very good point. Very good point. Tomorrow you'll find this interview on award-winning live travel talk community. Please check out every day. There's new 10, 20, 30 new stories on our travel talk community, acaratravel.com. It is so cool. There is so much good stuff <laughs> happening there, and it's just travel. Yeah. It's just people who love travel and people who are associated with tourism. And the stuff flying on that live travel feed coming from across this country is top notch. I highly suggest checking it out, following yeah. it, pick out your favorite, and follow them, whatever you need to do. And, of course, you'll be able to find this on all our social media, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. And please yeah. share because we want you, our viewers, and your friends to keep learning, gain knowledge, get a yeah. different outlook on the tourism industry, because you will get that watching this show. Make <laughs> and a grow different outlook for sure. And grow a positive attitude moving forward in these challenging times. Experiment, research, take a little effort, look around. You can make a difference. You can do it on your own. You can learn the skills, get a hold of us, and we'll be more than happy to talk more about that. And please note this. If you are a tour business operating in Canada, go to ehcanadatravel.com right now. Slide up your business for free. On Canada, we are Canada's largest privately operated, we are not government, national and provincial award winning website. Support Canada tourism on the acanadatravel.com because yeah, when you look through acanadatravel.com, we aren't the big boys. We're not the greedies. We don't take the corporates. We don't do 13, 18% on every booking that leaves the country. What we do is there's no commission. <laughs> that money stays in the pockets yeah. of the tourism businesses so they can hire staff, put food on the table, and develop yeah. their business. Come it's, on, Canada, wake up. It's amazing on that stuff. I mean, it was, again, stats the other day that, uh, I mean, all these. Uh, Things to supposedly make life easier, like the booking engine, the one-click book now. Yep. It's driving up the cost of everybody's vacations. Yep. You know, for that simplicity and, and basically what I think is, is um, you know, just booking something and not finding out about it, and et cetera, is just not planning your vacation properly as it is. Nope. But um, it's, it's driving up everybody's kind of, everybody's cost of travel. And average stays are falling. Because there yeah. is no planning. And the businesses are losing money and we're having businesses closing because actually they can't they can't afford to stay open with that 18% hit. Yeah. If you're going to stay online for all those hours researching your trip and you're not doing any of the proper research, all you're doing is looking at a hotel and going to booking.com and you're saving $7. Come on. <laughs> That's like, the other thing. You're not, Wake yeah. up. And 99% of the time, you're not saving. You go yeah. directly to the owner and you will get a better deal because they have to mark up the prices to cover the commission. Yes. It's very simple. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Same thing for everything. I mean, these, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So if you haven't heard, acattravel.com <coughs> was awarded another award. We were the best 2021 inbound travel tourism marketing business in Canada. Yeah. And we won that at the 6th, 6th annual uh, Lux Life Hospitality Awards. So that we're, we're running at probably about close to nine uh, awards and accolades in the last year and a half. Uh, if that doesn't tell you anything, we're growing. Come and join us. It's a fun group, a little bit on the crazy side, but that goes with the crazy Canuck. And you'll learn. And if you want to mm -hmm. learn, then you need to get on board. If you want to go the old school way, uh, all the power to you. 
But that's going to change, not just here in Canada, but it's changing around the world as we speak. People are waking up. So tourism in Canada is a lot more than what your regional, provincial, territorial associations are. They're not all out to lunch. There are some really, 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 <laughs> really good ones. Uh, it tends to be the smaller ones because they got to fight for survival and they mm -hmm. don't have a choice. Um, but the rig, the big ones, the big boys and girls, uh, I'm telling you, there's there's a lot of issues there because money seems to buy everything. And there's a lot more to that. There's skills, there's training, there's programs, there's platforms. Use them very, very much. Uh, next year, Junior, uh, next, uh, next show, do you want me to take that or are you going to run with it? I can run with it, but I was going to say, you know, if any communities need help in coming up with that that plan, with that uniqueness to make you stand out, not just in your local area, but globally, yep. come talk to us. Experience Community Program is the only one of its kind that helps communities market themselves on their own terms. So get a hold of us. Uh, we've got some great analytics to share with you. We've got people you can talk to. We've got the whole rig. Everything's there to show you how this program works. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's new. Yes. And yeah, the tourism associations don't offer you it. So that's up to you to make the first contact and get a hold of us. So next next show call, who is it? Next show, we have Petrina Shell. I think that's correct uh, yep. pronunciation. One of Canada's premier YouTube influencers and speaker, coach, and soon-to-be author. Should yep. be a good show. Petrina is, uh, I met her through a contact overseas. Our friend Jed Brown introduced me, and then we looked oh, at Jed. Holy, She is a YouTube whiz. So if you are interested in doing videos and video content marketing, again, content marketing, and we're concentrating a lot on it lately because we know it takes two to three months to get your content on search engines if you do it right. And mm -hmm. uh, that means we've got basically, hopefully next year, we have a spring, summer and fall, winter season, tourism season, one that we can actually live on. Um, then uh, then <laughs> have your content ready for that. So thank you yeah. for joining us tonight. Uh, we apologize. Patricia wasn't able to, to come in. Uh, we will try and do everything we can to get her back. We'll see you again uh, in October. <coughs> on October 12th, be kind. Canada mm. out. Yes.